first one on my page that I like. There's others. I'm just going to go to the Daphne Palomar. Sorry. I'm going to be like, and we're going to look at this thing. And you're supposed to know a bony orbit from last term. Can someone give me some numbers here that represent a bony orbit? 20 is good. 24. Yeah, all the bones surrounding your eyeball, which was last term, right? Max and all that. I'm never, I never asked that on a test. So what we're going to do instead is zoom in on the rest of the stuff here. To do that, I'm going to shift the model slightly. That one doesn't show enough. I'm going to do this one. This is one of my favorite models. Hit, hit. All right. Let's start with the green crud. What in the world's green crud? What's it doing? Uh, lacrimal something? Lacrimal. This is a ball part of your lacrimal or tear system. So what you're going to have to remember is that the tears start on the outside of your eye and drain down your nose. That's why your nose runs when you're crying. So you're going to start over here at number nine. What is number nine? Lacrimal gland. Lacrimal gland. That's your tear gland in English. That's your lacrimal gland. Like a windshield wiper, it comes down on the outside, sweeps over the eye, and drains out over here. So we're going to name number 11. Lacrimal canaliculi or lacrimal canals, in English, tear tubes. That drains to 10. Lacrimal sac. So there's the sac. And that's going to go down off screen this way. It's what you call the tube from here down. Nasolacrimal Naso duct. Literally nose tear tubing. The only other thing that's on this list that you can't really see is where these canals would come into your eye. There's a little hole there and there where the tears actually drain. Those are your wet. Lacrimal punctum or puncta. So the punctum is the drain hole into the canal, into the nose, down. All right? And what do you call tears for $200? Lysosome. Lysosome is the enzyme, but the actual tears are lacrimal fluid. That would be 300 bucks now. Okay, let's do some other doctor speak. Two and three. What are they? Two and three are eyelids in English, but you don't say that. You say palpebrae is your $300 word. Okay, then we have to name the corners of your eyelids. So like where number 12 is. That's the corner of your eye. So will yeah. that tell you whether it's right or left? You can do that, though most models don't have this. But that would be the medial canthus or commissure. So a canthus and a commissure are the corners. This is medial because that's my nose. Over here would be which lateral. one? Lateral canthus or lateral Sure. So are you talking about the white area and the white area on the medial part? No, kind of the V, basically the spot between your eyelids. So this area between here and here. So the gland is always on the lateral side. The, la the gland is on the lateral side. Okay. All right. So now, can someone give me what a caruncle is? It actually has a number. 11C. 11C, that's your caruncle. That's that little bump in the corner of your eye. It's always medial. That's your caruncle. Where you fix it. Gunkies. Where you get your sleep gunky. Yep. <laughs> Eye boogers, whatever you want to call them. Sand. <laughs> that's your crazy uncle. All right. That's your caruncle. So where's the conjunctiva? It's the pink uh, your, it's on your eyelid. Pink of your eye under your eyelid. So if you lift up your eyelids like Michael Swenson did in seventh grade, you'll see a pink lining uh -huh. that your conjunctiva is under the eyelids over your eye. All right. So that's the lining of your eyelid. So let's name some things. If I were looking under the eyelid, what do you call the conjunctiva of your eyelid? Palpebral. Palpebral. And there's a conjunctiva over your cornea. Which part's that? Ocular. Ocular or bulbar, meaning over the eye. So you take a sheet over the eyelids and the eye. Those are your conjunctiva. And conjunctivitis is pink eye, right? Inflames, your bloodshot eye. Eyelash, you know. Ciliary glands, you don't. What's a ciliary gland? It lubricates eye it's hair yeah, okay. Let me see if I have one. So on this model, if you were to look down where your eyelashes are, yeah. there'd be little glands down there. They're ciliary and tarsal glands. And those make like a sweat or a oil to lubricate your eyelids. So on this model, on the inside, these yellow things are vaguely representing that. But I never ask those on a model. I do ask them on paper, though. I never ask them on the model because you really can't see those glands. But look up ciliary and meibomian glands. Those are to help your eyelids function. What, what are meibomian? Those are tarsals, which are oil. Can you say tarsals? So those mixed together make eye boogers. Basically. Could you say where they are again? Did They're in the eye eyelid, between the eyelashes. Then there's oh, a space there. Yes. So either with the hair or between the hairs. Oh, okay. 
Looking at our outside eye land. Now we're going to start naming muscles. Yes. Sorry, the tarsal glands have the hair also? Yes. Okay. So now, here comes our part. I warned you, I, I did, about knowing which side the eye is on. So let's say I was nice enough to throw this model up. I'm never this nice. Whoa. All right? But then you see the muscles. So let's do number one. What is that one? Superior, Superior rectus. rectus, meaning straight ahead, pull straight rectus on top. There'd be one underneath, which would be the inferior, inferior rectus. Now this one, number four. Lateral. 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 Let's see, this is my nose, therefore this is lateral. Lateral rectus on the side. There'd be one in here. It would be medial rectus. Now comes a harder one. So there's this one here, which is at the top, and turns at your nose and goes back. Number five, superior, superior oblique. oblique, meaning superior at an angle. Say what it does again, please. It goes from your eye, back of kind of top of your eye, goes to your nose, goes through a pulley called the trochlea, then bends back along your nose. Okay. So it pulls on the top, inside of the eye. And there's one underneath, which goes from here towards your nose, like that one. That would be the inferior oblique. oblique. So you have a top and a bottom, an outside and an inside, and two diagonals make up the six muscles of the eye. Mm. But if you don't, if you get the wrong eye, you're going to get at least two of those wrong. It's the lateral medial. Mm. Right? So in this case, it's the right eye, so I have lateral medial superior and inferior. Make sense? So make sure you get your right and left first before you do the muscles. And the superior and inferior, the same, they take the same route, right? Basically, yeah, they towards your nose. They're just one, 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 Yes. Let's try that. I'm going to take a different eye. So, number five. Does anyone know which one that would be? Lateral. That's the lateral rectus. This is the right or a left eye. That would be lateral. That would have to be the right eye because my nose would be here. This would be outside. Right? Yes? You'd have to actually look down at the top, which you can't look at easily, but you'd look for that superior oblique going angle, or you look at the optic nerve's angle. If it was a left eye, Mr. Christine, wouldn't that, the muscle on the left side, the, the temporal side, wouldn't that be lateral too? Yeah. So it's how opposite. you can't tell if it's, oh, it's never mind. So the superior oblique here is yeah. pointing inside, toward the nose. It's going to be, um, right. Yes, the superior oblique points to the nose, which is mm -hmm. medial, and the optic nerve bends. So first job, find your right and left before you name the muscles. Otherwise, I guarantee one of them will be wrong. Okay, you know most of those. Now we're going to start naming the parts of the eyes. We're going to start on the outside and cut our way in. So the outside is called the fibrous tunic, meaning tough coat. And then you're going to name the things in it. So that white stuff, number 30. Sclera. Sclera is the white of your eye. So sclera is on the outside of the white stuff. So therefore there's a clear thing, number 40, you can't see it, but there's a clear thing right here that's numbered like 45. Cornea, that's where you put your contacts or touch your eye. So the sclera and the cornea are the outside coat of your eye. They're in the fibrous tunic. And, and they are part of the same thing. They're part of the same thing, is, just different part. One is translucent. Yes. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're going to cut into your eye and go one layer down. Let's do that. Click to toggle. Bam. All right. So if you look at that model, look at number 10. Number 10 is a layer under the sclera but not all the way in. That's the middle layer. So what do you call the middle layer of your eyeball? Uvia or vascular tunic. Vascular vascular tunic. They're synonyms, meaning it has blood in it. So if I go to this picture here, I like better. The white is the outer layer. The blue is the inner, la the middle layer. So this is co this is choroid or vascular tunic, uvia, and this is the sclera or fibrous tunic. So number ten. That actually the blue stuff is called the choroid. So that blue in that part is the choroid of the vascular tunic. That's the layer beneath the sclera. That's the layer beneath the sclera. The choroid? The choroid. Is it the same as like we had the, the choroid plexus? Did we have a choroid? Yeah, you did. It has nothing in common other than its blue. It's like a baby oh, right. or a fetus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, number 10 would be choroid. Oh, wait, there's more. We're going to chop this guy open. Oh, thanks. I got that. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Okay. 
So, the white, again, was sclera in my fibrous tunic. And for 10, the blue is my choroid in my vascular tunic. But there's other things that are also in the vascular tunic that aren't the choroid, which are basically these black things in here. Those are in the middle layer. So these little things, you go down, those are going to be the ciliary bodies. Those are those black bumps you see here. They're ciliary because they look like hair. Those go down and have a muscle in them called a what? We, what would you call ciliary that? Muscle. Ciliary muscle. <laughs> and those pull on the lens, the ciliary processes. So you have the muscles, the bodies, and the processes are all pulling on the lens. It's in the middle layer of the eye. Can you point to distinguish again between the process and the muscle? Process is just the, the whole area. The muscle basically is that ridge in that area. The body's bigger than the muscle, which is bigger than the process. And when we dissected an eye, we uh -huh. actually saw black. Is it actually black? Supposedly. Okay. So 24 is the muscle, 24 is the body? Okay. Actually, 24 is going to be the aura serrata. So that's different. 45 would be, say, the muscle. What's 27 then? 27. Is that, that is the retina, which you don't, you're not up to yet. Okay. All right. So the ciliary bodies are things holding the lens in. But then the front of the lens also has parts of this one. We're going to turn the eye around. We're going to do this. Get you in. All right. If you kind of look at the right hand side, remember the cornea was the outside of the eye. This flap is is in the middle. So what do you call that flap in the front of your eye? Where the color is? Iris. That's the iris. So the iris is also part of the vascular tunic. It's in the middle layer. All right. There's two sets of muscles, and the whole is what? The pupil. So the pupil's the hole, the iris is the flap. That's all in the middle. But then we're going to go now one further. We're going to go to this red layer. This is the third layer in of my eyes. What do you call the third layer in? Retina. The retina or the sensory tunic. It's where you feel, quote, in your eye. So you have fibrous tunic, vascular tunic, sensory tunic. Three layers. And so we're going to go to the back of the eye here and look at those. So the red stuff in general, all that red stuff where my mouse is, is the retina, the back of the eye. All right? But there are some things in there we have to find. And so if we're going to scroll down, this number 31, optic that's on the inside. Disc, optic disc. That's called the optic disc. What's on the outside of that? Let's find out. Can anyone tell me where that yellow thing pops out? That optic nerve? That's the optic nerve, number 19. That is on the outside of the eye, but it goes into the middle of the eye. So the optic disc is on the inside, the optic nerve is on the outside. They're one thing. Make sense? Yep. All right. So then, we're going to do a little bit more. Go back to my eye. Open. So look at 36. 36 is not the optic disc. That's not the nerve. Fovea? That's the fovea centralis. Very good. That's in the center of my eye. So if you look right at something, we'll learn next week, it goes on to that fovea centralis, exactly the center of my eye. And there's a depression there called the macula lutea. So the macula is a hole, the fovea is the, is the place, basically. And they're both on the retina. They're both in the retina. In the retina. They're both in the retinal layer. Does that make sense? Yes? Is it supposed to be yellow? It's supposed to be, to some Roman. Okay. Lutea, yeah. Sorry. It's, it's usually it's not colored yellow in most of the models. So 36 is a fovea centralis. Yes. And then 31 is the lutea? No. Is that the nerve? So, so 31 is the optic disc or the blind spot. Uh, what is the macula lutea? That's that. Macula lutea is number 36. The fovea is the center of the macula, and the macula is a depression the in your retina. They're essentially the same thing. The macula is the hole, the fovea is what's in the hole. Mm. You know. Isn't it great? There's a subtle distinction. So again, if I just put a sticker there and say name it, you can give me either one. Right? Because they're in the same place. But if I say name the depression, you say maculatea. Say name the thing in the hole, then you have to say fovea centralis. Makes sense? So subtle distinction. Alright, so let's find one more thing. That's the aura serrata. Let's find an aura serrata. Open. That is right where my mouse is pointing. That's the scalloped edge where the retina 
joins the ciliary bodies. This little scalloping is the ora serrata. That's where the retina meets the middle layer in the front of your eye. One of my favorite things to label, hint, hint, on a quiz. Where the retina meets what? Where the retina meets the ciliary bodies, or the retina meets the middle layer, ora serrata. You okay on those? Okay. So now, life is going to get ugly fast, because at the bottom of your list on number 12, we have some things to name in the cavities, chambers, and segments. Okay. Prepare your mind, body, and soul. All right. I want you to visualize this eye. I want you to visualize the lens, which is number 22. Split your eye in half. You have stuff behind the lens. You have stuff in front of the lens. So you're going to name those places. What do you call the area of the eye in front of the lens? Anterior. Anterior, Anterior. segment or cavity. So if you're in front of the lens, you're in the front segment or cavity. That would be everything from 22 forward. Is that including the cornea and all that The stuff? cornea is the outer end. So it's between the lens and the cornea. So you're saying everything in front of the lens? Yes. So what are you going to call everything behind the lens, between 22 and the back of the eye? Posterior. Posterior cavity or segment. So you split the eye into a front and a back, basically. But then, life gets a little more ugly. There's fluid in those segments. There's a fluid in the front part, and there's a fluid in the back part. What do you call the fluid that's watery in the front part of the eye? Aqueous, Aqueous humor, literally watery humor. Right? What do you call the fluid in the back of the eye? Vitreous humor, glassy fluid. So you have watery fluid in the front or the anterior cavity slash segment. You have vitreous humor in the posterior cavity slash segment. And the lens splits the two apart. You okay so far? But wait, there's more. Because in the front of the eye, you have two other segments. You have between the lens and the iris, and the iris and the cornea. The iris splits the front in half. So what do you call... The part of the eye between the lens and the iris. It would be the posterior chamber. And between the iris and the cornea would be the anterior, anterior chamber. So be careful. Chambers and cavities are different. Could you say that again? I will. I I'll draw it for you. Let me show you the way to draw this. Not that I know everything. I know this. All right. Let's draw an eye. This is anatomically perfect, right? Here's an eye. Okay, this is my lens. Notice how great I grow. Okay, so my lens splits the eye front and back. So the back part of the eye, this space, you, you called it a what? Posterior cavity, or you can say segment. I don't care which one you pick. And everything in front of the lens, you call the what? Anterior cavity slash segment. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add now the iris, that little flap. So the red is my iris. The iris then splits the front one into two, right? So then we're going to name the parts in front and behind the iris. So if you are between the lens and the iris, you are the posterior chamber of the anterior cavity. So that word and this word are different words, right? Posterior cavities back here, posterior chambers up there. So far, so good? And then between the iris and the cornea, you would be what? The anterior, anterior chamber of the anterior segment. I did not invent this. Between the iris and the cornea. So what you have to remember is that there's two places in the front and one place in the back. The posterior is just one thing. The anterior has two chambers in the one cavity, but both of them contain aqueous humor. Right, it's just we split the front into two. That's between the iris and the cornea. Iris and cornea. So lens to iris, iris to cornea. Both of them together are anterior cavity. Make sense? So cavities are big, chambers are smaller. You'll hate me for the week, but that's how it works. Make vague sense? Yes, I've done this before. So, which cavity contains aqueous humor? Mind me again? The anterior cavity. Which chamber contains vitreous humor? 
You're supposed to say none of them. Because the chambers are in the front. It's a cavity in the back. So no chamber has vitreous. The cavity has the vitreous. That's a good true or false question hitting you next week. That makes sense on the cavities, chamber segments. So you just got to split the eye to more than one room. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go down to the slide of the retina that thou shalt know. Let me go to J-Doc and show you a retina slide. All right. Here is the slide that you're going to memorize for next week. There's also one in your book just like it. But you, should, you need to know this slide. This is a retina slide. This is the back of the eye where you see the image, which we'll go over in the lecture. And if you go down to the bottom of page 12 in your packet, we've listed the things in here you're supposed to know. And the hardest part of this is to get your orientation. So I'm going to give you the trick. This empty land up here, notice there's nothing up there. That's where the vitreous humor is. So therefore, is that in the middle of the eye or the back of the eye? Where is that? The back of the eye. Is it in the center of the eye or the surface of the eye? It's in the center. So this is the center of the eye. And this would be the outside of the eyeball, where you could touch it physically. So this is inside, outside. Right? So the light is going to go this way, from there down. All right? So then what you do is, once you orient yourself that way, you're going to memorize the bottom of number 12. Because that's the order that the layers are in. All right, so here we go. You're going to start with the beaches, and you're going to go all the way to the opposite side. Find this dark, dark layer right here. That is the choroid, that's the vascular tunic, right? And then what you're going to do is you're going to go each layer up is on this page. So, these little brown things right here, can anyone hazard a guess what they might be? They look like cells. Well, that'd be right here, these ones here. Pigmented That's actually just right here, just above those. Those are the photoreceptors. Those are the rods and cones. So the first layer of cells, these are your photoreceptors or rods and cones we'll learn next week. The next layer up of nuclei, these ones, basically, from here to here, this line here. These ones are bipolar cells because they have two ends. And these ones are ganglion cells. So when you do this, you're going to say, okay, rods and cones or photoreceptors is the first group, all this. Bipolar, the second line, all this. Ganglion at the top, all that. And you're done. Yes? So we're mainly going to be concerned with looking at the region with the nuclei? Yes. Because okay. the cell actually extends above and below, but you can see the nuclei. So I start my choroid and my pigmented epithelium. Photoreceptor 1, bipolar 2, ganglion 3, and I'm done. And that's exactly what's listed here. But you have to start from the dark part and work toward the light part. The backwards of what you think. Make sense? That is the neural layer. That is the neural layer. All that's the neural layer. Oh. That's all in the retina. All right? <clears throat> so, let me throw one at you here and see if you can just be a quiz. Let me show you a picture you don't know. Here. That picture you just showed us of the neural layer, is that what the slide is when you said to yeah. look at that slide? Will it look that exactly the same? supposed to. Oh. Yeah, okay, so let's look at this. So, can someone tell me what these cells are? How did you know that? That's right. So here's the light, here's the dark, and I memorize them from dark up. So dark. Photoreceptors are here. These are? Those are? And that's all a retina. So if you just get that orientation right, you'll never be deceived. Much. So start with the dark, work toward the light. Make sense? Very good. That's a retina. That's the only slide this week of anything you have to know.
Those will be at the top. Okay, smarties, try this one. And then, I'm going to randomly point, and you're going to tell me what these are. Then you all. Right, so this is by this nuclei, officially the cell extends. And then these? Too easy. These. Photoreceptors, and then the core, and then technically the pigment epithelium is that little line right there. So again, as long as you get the orientation of the slide, this is one, two, three, gone. That's your retina. That's the little inner lining of your eyeball. Make sense? Yeah. I think that's pretty much all the eye stuff on your list. Yeah. Pretty much. So you can use the rest of your time as you see fit. Or not. Open lap because of four. Thank you for shopping here. All right, <laughs> okay, lecture exam in two weeks. <laughs>